thank you very much uh, for the introduction. And also, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this nice conference and beautiful place. And I, I'm very happy to be here. So today, I'm going to talk about toric mirror symmetry in terms of side representation. So this is uh, based on maybe one, one year ago paper. Uh, this is two years ago. And this one and uh, 0 to 9, 1, 9. And uh, um, so uh, this is about some uh, mirror symmetry uh, so for toric varieties. And mirror symmetry for toric varieties is somehow well studied. And uh, many people know many things about this. And in, in this talk, I only talk about genus zero mirror symmetry. So, um, so in this conference, many people talk, talked about higher genus chromatin variants and modularity and uh, or quasi-modularity or Jacobi forms and so on. But um, today, I so this talk is unfortunately only for genus zero. And uh, but I'm considering some equivariant chromatin variants. So, so maybe I should start with. What is the equivariant graphite invariance? So, uh, so this is uh, maybe also a connection to the title of this conference. So, equivariant graphite invariance are somehow related to, for example, gauged graphite invariance. So, uh, so in some in that sense, my talk is related to gauge theory. And uh, so, let us consider a situation where T is a algebraic torus. Uh, torus, just sister to something and acting on X. X is some quasi projective smooth variety. And uh, so, uh, so in this setting, so maybe later, later we, we don't restrict to projective variety. So, uh, so toric variety can be non-compact, for example, uh, toric clavier or manifold. And in this case, uh, so, but this is completely general. So if you have a torus action on X, then, then, you have, then, then you have a torus action on somehow the moduli space, space of stable maps. You have a transaction on moduli space of stable mass, and then then you can define from this you define uh, equivariant Gromhitte invariance. So this is a uh, equivariant intersection theory on the moduli space of stable maps. So um, it is in general of this form. So you have uh, GMD. Some, maybe I, 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 I don't go into the detail, but uh, so alpha i's are uh, equivariant cohomology class of x, and uh, d is a degree, and g is a, d, g is a genus of the curve. In this case, I only consider, in this talk, I only consider genus zero. But this, in general, uh, so lies in the equivariant cohomology of a point. So, in the usual Gromhitte invariant is a rational number, but now now it is a function somehow. Uh, it is equivariant cohomology of a point. This is a polynomial ring in in say R variable, where R is a rank rank of the torus, or or more generally, fraction ring of fraction ring of this one. So when Moduli space is non-compact, then it is may, maybe may lie in the fraction ring. So, so this is a equivariant Gromhitte invariance, and uh, so from this you can, for example, define uh, equivariant quantum cohomology. The the other thing, uh, the other ingredient in my talk is a uh, side representation. Representation and. So this is a following map. So this is a map from home of sister to T to 
maybe I'll, I'll review the construction later. But um, this is a map homomorphism of, from uh, this the group of co-characters to some invertible elements of quantum cohomology. So this is uh, equivariant quantum cohomology. And this star means uh, invariant, uh, invertible elements. And so, so for each, for each subgroup, so for, for each, maybe more, more generally, for each circle action, Hamiltonian circle action on a symplectic manifold, you, you get uh, some element, some invertible element in quantum cohomology. This is a Seidel representation introduced by Seidel in early 90s. And so I, I'd like to understand mirror symmetry in terms of this Seidel representation. So, uh, so maybe I also uh, want to explain some mirror symmetry first uh, proposed by Givental and also Hori and Waffa. And, uh, and many other people. So they, they claim that uh, if you are given a funnel manifold or funnel-like manifold, X, they should be mirror to a uh, low log polynomial. Polynomial F. So, um, so because I'm going to talk about not necessarily funnel toric variety, so I, I say funnel like manifold, but uh, this is somehow a conjecture that for each funnel like manifold, we may have some mirror low lamp polynomial and some symplectic geometry on X can be, uh, can be co computed by some periods of F, periods or Gauss money system of F. And uh, uh, so in the toric case, toric variety or obifold more generally, Or more generally, also that, that corresponds to Lowland polynomial F with uh, generic coefficients. With generic coefficients. So uh, if I have a toric variety, uh, then that corresponds to Lowland polynomial with somehow generic Lowland polynomial. And if I take more interesting, so more interesting funnel manifold. That should correspond to some F with some more special coefficients. So, um, so for instance, uh, if I, I'm interested in uh, mirror manifold for mirror for Grassmannian or partial flag manifolds, Th those are corresponds to F with some Lowland polynomial but have some very special coefficients. So th that is related to this mirror for toric variety by a toric degeneration, for example. And so in some sense, uh, mirror for toric variety is gives you kind of open dense subset of the space of all Lowland polynomials. And maybe if you go to some deep locus in the discriminant locus, then you, you may find more interesting funnel manifold. But uh, so this is a picture uh, for mirror symmetry. But somehow I, I don't go, I, I'm not going to talk about this more interesting case, but just toric case. So, um, but still I, I have some new observation there, so, um, so I'm going to give a rough statement of the main result of, of the result. So, uh, so this is as follows. So uh, let X be a n-dimensional toric variety. 
the dimension can be anything. And uh, uh, Mn, let Mn, Mn be uh, the space of, of all Lolan polynomials in n variables, in maybe just say x1 to xn. So this is some, maybe this is some, some space, but uh, actually later I think of this as kind of formal scheme. But uh, so this is just, uh, maybe you can think of this naively, some infinite dimensional space. Then uh, the main statement says that there exists a mirror map. Tau from Mn star some. Actually, this has some coordinate chart. Some Mn has a coordinate chart given by the equivariant cohomology of X. So, uh, so here this star, I, I, I'm not, I haven't specified what is star, but star is some base point. I, And certain mirror map uh, between the space of all Lolan polynomials and the equivariant cohomology, T equivariant cohomology of X. T, T is a natural torus acting on X. So for any toric variety, uh, we have uh, n dimensional torus action on X. And uh, such that the following. So this is uh, maybe, this may be sort of the, thought of as a coordinate chart on some on this infinite dimensional space. And such that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so this is infinite dimensional space. And this is maybe considered the flat coordinates. This, maybe you can think of this as flat coordinates, such that uh, if you consider the cogecital structure, such that structure, is isomorphic to uh, equivariant quantum cohomology. Quantum cohomology. So uh, equivariant quantum cohomology is some family of rings. So this is a Frobenius manifold structure. Uh, so this is family of rings and parameterized by tau. Tau, tau itself is in the cohomology ring, equivariant cohomology group. So this is a Frobenius, infinite dimensional Frobenius manifold. For each point, you have a product structure on, on the tangent space. And on the other hand, there is some uh, Kyojicito structure, which appeared in the talk of Belavin on Monday. And uh, so that can be associated with a family of Lowland polynomials in this context. So. Um, so this is, again, some another for means manifold structure, and they, they coincide. And moreover, moreover you have uh, some group of, so there is group action on, on this space, the change of variables or change of variables. Uh, variables. One xn. So, so, so you are considering we are considering Lowland polynomials of variables x1 to xn, and uh, on this space you, you can consider a big, very big group so that changes variables somehow. Some this is actually some formal group of change of variables, and that acts on this space. On, 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 on this space. And that corresponds to uh, the quotient by the change of variable that corresponds to uh, non-equivariant limit. It's no non-equivariant. So, so the quotient by the change of variables that 
exactly corresponds to that non-negative variable on this side. And then uh, under some uh, quotient, quotient by the change of variables, some uh, cytostructure reduces to more usual cytostructure on a finite dimensional base, and you get more some uh, usual Frobenius manifold on, on the usual cohomology. So this is a rough uh, statement. And uh, so in some sense, this resulted that toric variety of the same dimension have the same mirror. Uh, somehow, the difference arises in this base point. So, uh, so for each toric variety have different base point. Maybe I, I, we will see it in an example soon. And uh, for each toric variety have different base point and uh, somehow near the near each base point, you have somehow flat coordinates, different flat coordinates. Those could be completely different. So this is somehow the picture. And so to make more, to make this rough statement more precise, I, I'm going to explain this in a, some example. And also, moreover, maybe I should mentioned that uh, all these isomorphisms somehow mirror map and uh, isomorphism between cytostructure and equivariant quantum cohomology, this is, all these are constructed in terms of side representation. So uh, let's consider the case X is P2. So, um, so this is uh, maybe the most e easy case, but so P2 has a fan and According to Givental and Horibafa, we just write a uh, fan for P2. This fan for P2, fan diagram. And I choose uh, just one dimensional generator, sorry, the generator for one dimensional cones. And each generator corresponds to a term in the mirror Lowland polynomial. So this is mirror to F, x1 plus x2 plus one on x1, x2. So, uh, so the rule is simple, so I, I just assign one variable for each primitive generator for each ray, and but so I assign multiplicatively. So uh, this, sorry? Uh, later, yes, later. Yeah. This is only classical case. And and also we we somehow we also consider some Q variation, some deformation parameter Q. So this is uh, I think some classical version of the mirror symmetry by Givental. And so in this case, a statement that is the following: so quantum cohomology of X. This is small quantum cohomology. I, I, maybe I put small S small quantum cohomology of X. This is isomorphic to Jacobi ring of F. The Jacobi ring is, by definition, this is just a quotient of this ring, Roland polynomial ring, by the idea of generated by derivative of F. This is, and under this isomorphism, some of Q corresponds to Keller parameter of X. Yeah, parameter of X, and yeah, <coughs> and this is a given the result, and and if I want to make this equivariant, then what I do is the following. So, um, so in, on P two we have a torus sister square action on P two acting on. P2. And uh, so we have two equivariant parameters, say lambda one, lambda two, equivariant parameters. So that uh, the equivariant cohomology of a point is a polynomial ring in lambda one and lambda two. And then uh, if lambda, I, con I introduce the following mirror. So this is always some general rule, but just consider Um, 
log of x t. So I introduce this function. This is a multi-valued function, but uh, still we have the same statement. So small equivariant quantum cohomology of P2 is isomorphic to Jacobian ring of F lambda. This is also due to Gibb and and but um, one can rewrite this in a different way. So, um, so Jacobian ring of this one can be computed by taking a derivative of this function, and this is. It turns out it is easy to see that this is a coordinate ring. A coordinate ring of the following. So, of. Lambda i is equal to d f d log x i. So uh, if I try to find the critical point of f lambda, then I just consider differentiation in log x i, and uh, set, and then you see this equation. So this is the equation for critical points. So uh, equivariant quantum cohomology of x is a coordinate ring of this, uh, this space. And from, from this presentation, maybe it is clear that this is a Lagrangian submanifold in, uh, this is some Lagrangian submanifold inside x lambda space. Because this is a graph of the differential of a function. And in, in fact, uh, there is a proposal or some viewpoint proposed by Konstantin Telman and actually I learned I learned his point of view after writing my paper but uh, this is I think a very clear way to understand the situation so uh, so he said that uh, uh, actually so in order to determine uh, somehow f it suffices to know that uh, how, how the spectrum of the equivariant quantum cohomology is embedded into the symplectic space, x lambda symplectic space. So x, x and lambda are somehow canonical conjugates. And lambda is uh, known, so lambda is equivariant parameter, so we only need to know what is x. So uh, we claim that, so Thelman claims that x i is a side element. Cytal element. That means cytal element is the image of the cytal representation. So the image of the cytal representation is some, some invertible element in quantum cohomology, and I call it cytal elements. So because uh, torus is two dimensional, I have two cytal elements. And, uh, and spectrum, small equivariant quantum cohomology is. Uh, is a Lagrangian sub variety, variety in the x lambda space. So, uh, so this is somehow uh, how you can see the mirror tautologically. Um, so, uh, so this ring contains x and lambda, x and lambda i. So, therefore, the spectrum of this can be. Uh, identified with some sub-variety, affine sub-variety in x lambda space, and that is Lagrangian, and therefore you can, you can find some generating function f. So f is a generating function. Generating function of this uh, Lagrangian sub-variety. And so in the toric case, this is just a uh, some generating function is a single valued function, and in general it is not single valued. F is not single valued, but, uh, but this fact is general fact. So Lagrangian submanifold in X lambda space, this is uh, for, for general space, and, uh, but somehow the connection to Mira lambda gizmo model is only for toric case. But, uh, but it, because some, uh, for other cases, maybe F may be multi valued. 
So, um, okay, so uh, maybe, uh, yeah, so in some sense my story is somehow extending this to big quantum cohomology. And so, uh, so we consider the following universal function. So let me stick to the example P2. And in the case of P2, I consider the following function, large f x with parameter y. So this is a sum over all lattice points k in Z2 and yk and x to the k, q to the beta k. So, uh, so this is some unfolding of the previous function. Uh, so maybe I need to explain. So this is sum over all lattice points in the fan. So instead of all, so originally I only considered the sum of three lattice points. But I, yeah, so we also had this constant term. And also other points, any other points in the lattice. So, um, so in this case, uh, uh, maybe I didn't explain what is beta k, uh, but this can be somehow explained in a diagram easily. So if this corresponds to x1, this corresponds to x2, then this corresponds to x1, x2, and this corresponds to x1 square, x2 square, and so on. So x1, x2 square. And uh, so, this point corresponds to Q on x1, x2. And therefore, so, so for each cone, I just uh, write a lattice point in that maximal cone as a linear combination of the edge vectors. So, uh, so this vector is a sum of this vector plus this vector. So I, I think I assign the monomial x2 on Q, a Q on x2 on this. And similarly, somehow I assign x1 on q, and so on. So, so that, that explains how, how I put this beta k. And this is general rule so <coughs> for general case. And in some sense, some of these q, q variables is somehow redundant because uh, we can absorb these q variables into y variable. But it, it is somehow technically important because somehow Q specifies the direction of the large radius limit point. That, that corresponds to the base point I talked about before. <laughs> and uh, the statement that somehow we have of some mirror map, mirror map that is a map from Y, space of all Ys, to uh, tau of Y. This is uh, in covariant okay, cohomology of X. This is some formal map, uh, but isomorphism, formal isomorphism, such that, for instance, uh, uh, we have the similar statement as before. So, uh, such that, such that uh, Jacobian ring of F, large F lambda. So large F lambda is uh, just, large F lambda is F minus lambda log X, just as before. This is isomorphic to big quantum cohomology of X. So uh, and under this mirror map, so uh, sorry, so maybe I should say that this YK is a parameter. This is a parameter. This is a parameter for the B model. And uh, maybe first statement is uh, on the level of ring. Somehow, if you consider the Jacobian ring of F lambda, then that is isomorphic to the equivariant quantum cohomology of X. So uh, in order to understand why, why somehow this space of parameters, infinite dimensional space of parameters, correspond to equivariant cohomology of X, this is somehow intuitively 
um, not so difficult to see. So, um, so it is easy to see that the equivariant cohomology of X has a C basis parameterized by lattice points. So this is somehow basic observation uh, in toric geometry. So uh, although although this mirror map is not just a linear map, but uh, this is but linear approximation gives you somehow this statement. So uh, so more precisely, if I take just uh, for example in this P two case, so this is some fact, and P two case if I take d one d two d three as toric divisors, divisors, then uh, equivariant cohomology of, T equivariant cohomology of P2 is generated by D1, D2, D3 with only a relation D1, D2, D3, the product 3 is 0. So, uh, so in this diagram, for example, X1 corresponds to D1, X2 corresponds to D2, and this point corresponds to D1, D2, and uh, this point corresponds to 1, D3, and so on. <coughs> so uh, so because, because the product of 3 is 0, so you, you cannot multiply elements in the different column. That, that just gives you 0. So D3, D1, D3. Ups. So these elements give spans. Some there, these elements are linearly independent and spans this uh, infinite dimensional space. So it seems somehow explains why this correspondence is not so strange. <coughs> so. Um, so actually, I want to somehow. This is only the level of uh, this statement is only the level of at the level of rings, but I want to lift this statement to the statement on a D module. So, um, and this is somehow important in in the proof um, lift to a D module. So what I want to do is, as I said before, I want to show cycle structure of F lambda is isomorphic to quantum D module, equivariant quantum D module of X. Maybe I, <coughs> this is a, the so-called quantum D module. And, and this side is uh, some gauss manning system. Uh, so roughly speaking, I, I, I don't have time to explain in detail what the site of structure. But roughly speaking, this consists of uh, oscillating forms. So, so I, I need some oscillating parameter z, a new parameter z. This plays an important role. And the omega. So this consists of some oscillating differential forms. And omega is a differential form, omega 2 on sister square with coefficients in z, and also maybe lambda, and also everything contains parameter y, which I just omit, and also q. And this consists of some oscillating forms of, of this form. So um, for example, omega is just like dx1, dx2, some volume form. And uh, on this, this one is, uh, this one also, um, this is some lift of the quantum cohomology to D module. And uh, this is something um, uh, appears in Frobenius manifold for in general. So it is a tangent, tangent bundle of, uh, tangent bundle of uh, cohomology group. This is infinite dimensional space, but infinite dimensional vector bundle over infinite dimensional space. And equipped with, with the Brobing connection. The Robin connection. So, okay, 
I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to say. On this side, you have a, a Gauss Manning connection. Connection on this side. On this side, you have Gauss Manning connection. So you have somehow a parameter y. So there is a flat connection on the y parameter space. And uh, similarly, you have somehow tangent tangent shift and uh, equate with um, connection, flat connection. And the rubbing connection, maybe I just uh, briefly try to recall. So the rubbing connection, connection is something. So in the tau direction will be, if I use some some basis and coordinate, this is plus one on z v i star tau. This is some connection on the tangent chief. And uh, again, we have some parameter z. Okay, so we, we have some oscillating parameter z here, and that corresponds to this parameter one on z here. Um, yeah, it, um, it may sit in a smaller group because it should preserve metric. Yeah, but um, yeah, it is somehow contained in a given tau group, but um, it is, has to be symplectic. But yeah, maybe even sm contained in a much smaller group. So. In general, some monodromy of the quantum cohomology should somehow, it is a conjecture, but it should arise from the derived equivalence of x. So, uh, so it should be contained in much smaller group. So, um, so yeah, so this is a, a developing connection. And uh, I want to, actually some a left sided representation to quantum D module. And that, that was done, that is called shift operators. So uh, sidereal representation on quantum D module. So this is uh, called shift operators. So uh, shift operators are um, introduced by Braberman, appeared in uh, some of many people's work. So uh, Braberman, Molik, Okonkov, and Van Haripande. So, uh, so I think originally Okonkov and Van Haripande used it in the context of quantum cohomology of Hilbert scheme of points on C2. And then Molik, uh, Braberma, Molik, Okonkov uh, somehow formulated in more general context. And uh, so this is somehow side representation on quantum D motion. So, uh, so maybe I, I want to review the construction briefly. So again, somehow X is a T variety and I, I pick any sister subgroup in T. <coughs> then I have a uh, following space, it's the so-called uh, Seidel space. So EK, this is uh, X cross C2 minus zero, real C star. So th this is some subspace associated with uh, C star action on X. And where this C star action is defined by as follows. So S acting on X, V1, V2, as uh, S to the K acting on X, S inverse V1, S inverse V2. So, so this is the action. And so for instance, if K is a trivial, trivial homomorphism, 
then this is just a product of x cross p1, because we don't have action here. But this is twisted by sister action. So um, in general, this will be, this has a structure of an x bundle over p1. This is, there is a projection to the second factor, so my model sister, this is P1. You have a projection to the second factor, but you don't have a projection to the first factor. Uh, so this is an X bundle. X bundle, the fiber is X over P1. And this is somehow important things introduced by Seidel, and and, uh, and we have the following action. We consider the following T cross sister action. So uh, maybe uh, let me just draw a picture. So this is a EK, picture of EK. The fiber ring over P1. And I have uh, zero and infinity as a, and, and I have a fiber over zero, X zero, and fiber over infinity, X infinity. So uh, th then, actually, I, I want to consider some group action on EK. So that is given by T cross sister action. That is a T cross sister action on EK. So this is just in formula, I just give the definition. So this is basically just, a, this is basically something like X cross P1. And uh, on X factor, original T acts, and on P1 factor, C acts. So, uh, so this can be done in, a, in this twisted bundle, UV2. So, um, so this is the action. And uh, maybe the crucial point in the definition of shift operator, so this is, uh, this is their work, um, is the following thing. So, uh, so, so this fiber at zero and fiber at infinity, so x zero and x infinity, they are invariant under T cross sister action. And the actions, so T cross sister action on T cross sister action on x zero and x infinity will be something like this. So on x zero, x infinity will be, so T u acts on x, x zero as T times x zero, and T u times x infinity will be T u k to the x infinity. So, um, so on this fiber, maybe by, by definition, it is easy to see on, on the, this fiber, this is a one zero fiber. Uh, it is easy to see that somehow T u just uh, T cross sister just act by projection to T. But on this factor, there's some twist. So um, there's some twist. And, and this twist is somehow here. So uh, it just not act by projection to T, but some, there's some mix, mix, mixing. So mixing between T and sister. And uh, so this is somehow uh, the key point of the uh, shift operator. So we consider, as Seidel did somehow, we consider the following correspondence. So we consider the moduli space, space of holomorphic sections of EK. So we count, instead of just counting a map to X, but somehow we consider a map to this twisted bundle. 
section of this twisted bundle. And we consider the moduli space and then take certain compactification. So this is, for example, you can just take the stable map compactification. And then you have a, a correspondence between x0 and x infinity. You have a evaluation map at 0 and infinity. So uh, this gives you an uh, operator. This gives you an operator, S, which I write SK, from T cross sister equivariant cohomology of X0 to T cross sister equivariant cohomology of X0. <coughs> and uh, actually, so th this T cross sister equivariant cohomology of X0, this is just a uh, because sister, compo sister factor act trivially on x0, is t equivariant cohomology of x, with one variable z. So a uh, polynomial ring in z, uh, tensored. So z is the same parameter as we see before. So, um, so this sister equivariant parameter becomes somehow um, an oscillatory parameter in, on the cyto side. And on this side, uh, this is a little bit subtle, but you, you can identify, you can do some identification with x infinity and x zero. Somehow, this is more there because x zero and x infinity are the same as a space. So uh, you can identify in some way. So, but this identification is not linear over equivariant cohomology of a point. So, and, and therefore, this is x t star of x. I join Z. So, so in this way, you get the map here from, from equivariant cohomology of X to itself. And this is a shift operator. And there, there are several properties. Um, and also, uh, maybe I, I don't mention it here, but you can also extend this definition to uh, to big K, so you can also insert parameter tau. You can define with tau with some bulk deformation parameter or equivalent cohomology. And then, uh, then what you do is uh, what you see from from the this construction, in particular this. Uh, shift of the t, t cross sister action is the following properties. So first, first uh, this SK shift the action of lambda. So SK lambda i is equal to lambda i minus k i z. So uh, this is some, there is some Heisenberg group uh, type commutation relation between equivariant parameter. Lambda i was a t equivariant parameters. And recall that this z, z is a c star equivariant parameter. And this is uh, this property one, just follows from the somehow the action, somehow the action on the difference of the action on x zero and x infinity. So they are they differ by just somehow k factor. And the second property, this is somehow the original Seidel representation, s k, s tau, s l is this is proportional to there is some factor, but. K plus L. This is some side representation. This is some, some side representation. And also, this SK also commutes with the Dubrovnik connection. This Dubrovnik connection. With this Dubrovnik connection. And so uh, you have some rich structure on quantum D module, equivariant quantum D module. And uh, 
maybe, uh, yeah, I should first mention that these first uh, relations somehow, they are somehow, they satisfy some, some kind of Heisenberg relation, commutation relation, canon, canonical commutation relation. This is uh, corresponds to the fact that uh, lambda and S are the side of variable are conjugate. So recall that we have somehow lambda variable and x variable are conjugate each other, and and x variable corresponds to this side of element. So uh, this explains why my lambda and x s are conjugate variable in equivariant quantum cohomology. In some sense, quantum D module is a quantization of a quantum cohomology. So uh, this is a canonical quantization commutation relation, and uh, and the second remark is that. Uh, Originally, some Seidel element, Seidel element, is just a limit of this uh, shift operator. So uh, S K is a limit of z goes to zero. This c star equivariant parameter goes to zero of S K applied to the unit. So this is a Seidel element. This was the original side element. So, uh, uh, so by, by this somehow shift operators and uh, side elements, we can uh, tautologically, in some sense, tautologically construct mirror map and mirror isomorphisms. So that's what I'm going to explain now. So um, construction. Isomorphism. So, uh, so what, what we want to do is uh, to construct isomorphism between cytostructure structure of f lambda and uh, and uh, quantum d module equivariant quantum d module of x, and such that in such a way that. Uh, you have Gauss-Mannin connection that corresponds to the Brobin connection. And also, uh, you have an action of xk. Actually, I, I need this extra term, but this is not very important. Uh, because in some sense, Seidel representation is uh, ambiguous up to powers of q, and it's not so important. The, this corresponds to SK, the shift operator. And so, so if, actually, somehow, I, I, I claim that if we want to find an isomorphism satisfying these two properties, then the isomorphism can be uniquely fixed. So, um, so for, for instance, if I take an um, element here, so if I take, take uh, this oscillating form, so dx1. Just assume I'm, I'm just still working on p2. And uh, uh, take this element. This is a section of this module. And uh, what this goes to? So this goes to some element in quantum equivariant quantum cohomology. So, quantum D module, equivalent quantum D module. This is just a, a section of the tangent sheaf, section of the tangent sheaf of the equivariant quantum, equivariant cohomology. And I, I want to know what, what is this section, and that this can be determined uniquely somehow, almost uniquely, I should say. Um, because, uh, because this element satisfies the following differential equation. So uh, z d d y d d y k, if I differentiate this in if lambda x y and z dx on x. So, some cohomology class of this. By very simple differentiation, you just uh, 
sum of big one term. So this is uh, x k q to the meter k by the very definition of f lambda e to the f lambda x y on z dx. So you have this differential equation, and uh, by this requirement, so this is Gauss-Manning connection. Maybe I didn't say explicitly, but this is Gauss-Manning connection. So therefore, so therefore we should have uh, the Robin connection d d y. Actually, I need to differentiate tau because because this is somehow proved up by the mirror map. Um, Omega, this is equal to um, SK tau of omega, tau y of omega. So, um, so this is a differential equation satis satisfied by the image of this element. And you can somehow solve this. Uh, and moreover, if you take the z equals, z equals 0 limit, then you also find the following differential equation for the mirror map. So dy dk should be should be determined by this differential equation. So um, so this is somehow to logically de determine the mirror map and the mirror isomorphisms, and um, and somehow you can show these theorems. And maybe I also uh, mention that uh, finally I just want to mention one thing. So, um, so of course some of these differential equations are very abstract and it doesn't seem to be, of course you can show abstractly that this differential equation has a solution. But uh, on the other hand, you can also uh, determine tau as a mirror map and uh, this omega by somehow I function. and. Uh, so this is a more traditional method of given tau, so given tau i function. But uh, actually, given tau i function can be also solved in this way. So, uh, so, so one can also uh, recover given tau i function. Which is certain. Maybe I don't say what is given tau function. It's certain hypergeometric function by some this kind of differential equation. I y. So this is some infinite dimensional I function. But, uh, I y. For for some S K is some explicit the difference operator. Difference operator. Operator. And constant difference operator, and uh, somehow from this you can uh, define I function and also solve these equations explicitly. So thank you very much. Thank you.